Welcome to the Body Smart Fitness Podcast. I'm Gemma. And I'm Jamie. And this episode is all about... Comparisonitis. You said it right. I got it, yeah. yes. <laughs> if you have ever compared yourself to other people and felt crap about it, we're going to talk about it, we're going to get deep, and we're going to give you some actionable tips to help you stop comparing yourself to others and realise how awesome you are. So you're full of awesome quotes. I am. I've got loads. I've got a few. Too many. Too many. Yeah. One of my favourite quotes is comparison is the thief of all joy it most certainly is do you agree I, yeah because i've been very guilty of this in the past explain one talk to me about it because today's podcast is all about comparisonitis so you know when i was in school it was about who had nicer shoes or nicer coats or it was very money materialistic kids comparing kids how old how old were you then that started becoming a thing I'd say in like senior school Mm -hmm. so like 11 upwards I think that's when things like that start to matter a little bit more so there was that um then and I mean that was even like come down to like what car your parents picked you up in you know what I mean really yeah I mean yeah like my dad had a a Toyota van (laughs) you know what I mean (laughs) and it's like people coming over and picked up on a Porsche or you know Range Rover or whatever else but you know looking back it's it's ridiculous but you know at the time when you're a kid i think you take things on board even more so that was probably a good first example of it then um then when i got into started training in the gym uh I used to compare my body in, ter- in terms of how i looked to other people i followed online um and i used to think like oh why is one of my pecs bigger than the other why don't i look as symmetrical as this person or i wish i had abs like them mm-hmm. or whatever else and i got that got really bad at some points in terms of like comparing how I physically looked to to other people to other men um and just never being happy with what I've got and at the point like if, if I showed you for what I look like back then I look back at that photo back then I'm like what the fuck like you know when you just and I hear this by what the way what do you mean in what way like was, because I was you like, look great or I was a lot leaner than I thought yeah I so it's it's weird because back then I thought I looked different and mm-hmm. now when I look at my eyes and I see that photo, I'm like, you know, you look, you look great. Like you were, yeah. I was in probably in like the best shape of my life. But at the time it was never enough. It was, it was, it was not good enough for me. And my mum, I, uh, my sisters, I, that's because I was a lot younger and I, they live with them then. They were like, what are you talking about? You know, just, they, I, I just couldn't see it. Um, and I was, you know, but that was just where I was at that time. And I was very much comparing myself all the time to, to what other people look like and just, yeah, it was a, uh, it, it wasn't great. And and the funny thing is, I actually speak to a lot of clients, and I've spoken to my mum about this. I think I've actually spoken to, to you about this. But I can speak to some women in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, and they can look at an old photo of themselves and tell you exactly how they were feeling. Yeah. And they look back at that photo then, and they're like, "Oh my god, I look great." I was like, "Why was I so unhappy? Yeah. Why was I so unhappy? Like, look at me, I'm, I'm." in my youth and I'm in my prime and I look great and it's like at the time it just wasn't enough and um and I could I could really relate <laughs> to that as well well I was gonna um, say I've never heard a bloke talk about it like you've just said it there because it's it's usually what you think that that women do mm-hmm. I didn't realize that you'd gone through that as well yeah yeah it was uh I've I definitely had a a, a big level of body dysmorphia back at that age 100 percent. i think everyone does by the way and i I don't, I don't think um there's a person i've met and got to know who is 150 percent confident in every single mm. ounce of their body i think th- there are some people as you get older but there's still little things there and i think that's normal you know as well well to to a degree um but back then uh yeah it was definitely a lot worse and do you think um taking an interest in the bodybuilding world added to that i think so because it was all you know bodybuilding back then was it's all about symmetry it's all about um you have what's called so how your body is shaped and this is everyone by the way there's, there's two, a couple of things that make that up is the muscle insertion so where the muscle insertion starts so if i were to look at my bicep my muscle insertion starts there but some, just above your just above where crease, of crease of my arm which yeah in bodybuilding worlds would be good but yeah. some people's insertion will start halfway up their arm um, I, I and when you tense yeah it comes in a little bit 
Right. Um, you'll see this on men. You'll see this on people's coughs more than anything else. So you can look at some people's coughs and their muscle incision is like halfway up the leg. So look, they yeah, look like they've yeah, got I've these noticed that before when you tiny, see tiny people in the gym. Yeah. They might have big coughs, but the muscle incision is halfway up the leg. And then you see some other people and the muscle incision is down at their Achilles. So that is your genetics. You cannot change that. That's where the muscle starts and that can dictate the shape and the length and the size. And then you have the muscle belly, which is how round and full the muscle looks. Um, and a lot of that is based off uh, your genetics and your genetic makeup. So um, yeah, you know, looking at bodybuilding, it's all about symmetry. It's all about having good muscle belly, bellies and everything looking you know, a similar way. Um, so yeah, I think spending too much time looking at bodybuilders mm. and watching them train and talk about their bodies and flexing on youtube and doing all this stuff i was very much into that at that age because i wanted to get to the gym and train and, and look how they did so yeah i think that added a, a big layer of that uh, you've never done so. a bodybuilding show have you no i i did a uh, go to do one once um and then ended up not because it, it involved way too many uh performance enhancing drugs oh, uh, okay yeah so, and I actually almost did go down the step of doing that and yeah. decided again, like that wasn't the road that I wanted to go down. I've been to a few. I, I did a, when I first started training with you, yeah. I was doing a fitness challenge with, with Body Power, mm -hmm. which is an exhibition that happens, a fitness exhibition that happens in the UK yeah. um, every year. It's the, the biggest one. Um, but it's rooted in you know, bodybuilders from all over the world mm -hmm. come there. There's bodybuilding shows. And so for the first time, that was the first time I'd ever kind of stepped into that world. And I found it really hard watching, because there's women, obviously, yep. who do this yeah, as yeah. well. And, and you know, physiologically, when women get very lean. They and lose <laughs> their period. Yeah. They, it, it's, not, it's, not health, it's not a healthy sport. But, you know, I think we have to, I, I do look at it, and any athlete at the top level probably isn't isn't healthy you know what yeah. i mean when you're performing at the best of the best of the best you, know, you probably aren't the epitome of health at that point there's some sacrifice in terms of getting there but i do think bodybuilding is there's a lot that goes into it whether it's getting to unhealthy levels of body fat percentage whether it's taking performance enhancing drugs whether it's the obsession with how you look all the time um and then ultimately as well it's oh, i probably get a lot of backlash for saying this it's a glorified beauty show at the end of the day. Yeah, no, well, because yeah, it's, right. you're being judged by other people. It's not like you go and sprint 100 meters and it's very clear who the winner was. You get up and five people who are in front of you who maybe don't know you or maybe know the person next to you, you know, or whatever else, they get to decide and get to judge you on how you look. But this And this is what I was coming yeah. back to because that's what I found really difficult. Going to watch these shows you are the person judging is compare first of all they're comparing those mm. competitors their body shapes like you i didn't yeah. realize that what you've just told me there you can't control your genetics no you can't so whatever yeah. and is is there a preferred way that the muscles yes. right so they, they want like they're looking for symmetry you know that's yeah. often what they're looking for they're looking for symmetry they're looking for you know size and and there's there's lots of different things and depends on what show whether it's like men's physique or bodybuilding or whatever it is because there's all different categories uh, but even then, some of it is the lines are very skewed. And sometimes you can have a whole crowd being like, no, no, so-and-so should have won. Uh, but like they don't, they come fourth or something. Yeah. And it's, I think that's very hard. It's very defeatist to take on board. If you feel like the whole crowd and the whole show believed you won and then you place fourth, mm -hmm. and you don't get to the side. It's just the judges, you know, it's, so yeah, I, you know, I, I've, I've been very competitive since a young age. And uh, I think I was about to get into that for the wrong reasons um, to maybe mask more of this body dysmorphia or I'll get an even better shape or I'll look a certain way. And that's because that's what everyone else on sort of social media who I followed yeah. was doing. And then um, I just kind of had to have a, a, a strong word with myself and, you know, is, is this really, you know, the route that I want to go down? I would also spoke to a few peers that I know who had competed before and they'd said, look, like, if you're struggling now in terms of like how you maybe look getting down to a body fat percentage that is not sustainable and being in the best shape of your life for a couple of days 
and then never being able to get back to that unless yeah. you diet again, well, it's not good. But that 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 brings me perfectly mm -hmm. to to what I was going to say about for us women yeah. coached by Body Smart. We do compare ourselves. So we go online, we go on social mm -hmm. media and we're comparing ourselves with, with women yep. who look incredible. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of videos that get made and you see them in these amazing gym gear, very yep. skimpy and they've got washboard abs and they look fantastic. But the work that's gone into that is is cra is crazy and often we you yeah. know you're comparing yourself i'm me as a, a busy mum i'm comparing mm -hmm. myself to a professional athlete essentially yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. it's so it can be so psychologically damaging well have you um the song you should always wear sunscreen i forget who sings it baz lerman baz lerman and he has this famous line in there which is like don't read beauty magazines they, they will, will only make, make you feel ugly, ugly. <laughs> and um <laughs> if you look at what we're doing now as a behavior, we are looking at beauty magazines every day for multiple hours on Instagram. Yeah. And that, when you're looking at edited photos, you're looking at athletes, you're looking at people in the top 0.1% of, of bodies and you're comparing then your body to them, mm. that's a recipe for it's, it's toxic. It's a toxic place to put yourself and put your mind and put your body in, and, you, and you don't want to be doing that it's not great and you know there are i've met a lot a lot a lot of people a lot of women i've coached a lot of women uh, and yeah genetically some people store fat in what might be seen as more desirable areas some ladies might store it on their fat in the boobs and nothing on the stomach uh, some put it all on the hips some put it all on the legs some put it all on their arms mm. you don't get to decide that they are the cards you are dealt at, <laughs> at birth what you can do and what you should do and what everyone should do just focus on being the best version of them and that was a lesson you know i've got and you no one will probably notice this other than maybe people are told i've got one peck that looks very deformed or not symmetrical to the other um, every time i look in that photo i see that and, and uh, you fixate on that and i fixate on that to a degree even now uh not so much now um but that's taken a long time but that used to be a thing that would just like get me every time it was like i'd just fo hyper focus on that and uh, I just got started getting to, I just started getting to a point like, you know what? I'm healthy. Mm. Like uh, I'm, 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 I'm overall, I, I'm happy with how I look in lots of other areas. And there's not that much that changed. I was like, I've got nothing to fucking complain about. I'm complaining about fucking peck. <laughs> I was like, fuck off, Jay. <laughs> I got yeah. started getting pissed off with myself. And uh, I just, I, I, my discovery on Instagram would just be all men competing all the time, always posting these photos. I just sort of unfollowed everyone. Um, there was maybe like one or two people that I kept in there who I had a lot of respect for, for maybe other than how they looked when they competed, they have maybe of a, of a great knowledge. So yeah, it's a, uh, yeah. That is, that is something what you just explained there, that if anybody has found themselves caught in that comparisonitis trap, you know, mm -hmm. you end up, you, and you don't even mean to do it. You go on Instagram, you hit that button in the discovery and there's all those posts that, yeah. that pop up. And mm -hmm. before you know it, you've been sat there for 15, 20 minutes and like, if it's my discovery, yeah. <laughs> it's these amazing yep. fit, awesome women. And I don't want to detract from their hard work. I don't also. No, I don't want to discourage from, from anyone's no. hard work and, and, and you can follow them and watch what they do, but you have to start, if it starts becoming an issue where you're comparing yep. yourself to, to them, to you, and it's not making you feel good. Like, and that's doing that every day, mm -hmm. even without you realizing, even if you maybe like the person a little bit, like you've got to just make that decision. Like, is do I need to unfollow this person? Yeah. Like I was telling you before on the way here, we have like five hundred people a day that unfollow us, and I'm like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good. Like, like you know, we probably gain about fifteen hundred people, but like, yeah. if people either find our content triggering or just it doesn't agree with them or doesn't sit with them or doesn't read well with them, good. Like, I respect you for unfollowing mm -hmm. our account and follow people that are gonna that give you value, give you entertainment, make you feel good. And if our page for whatever reason wasn't doing that, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And it's, 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 I think auditing who you follow is, is huge. There's another famous quote since we like so many wanky quotes, you know, they say, <laughs> uh, you know, you are the five people that you hang, hang around with. Jim Rohn. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever that is. And I think it's very, very true. And I think if we were to rephrase that in a 2021, uh, like sort of world 
I would say that's still very true and the people that you follow on social media. Oh, absolutely. So because if if you're following people who like gossip and bitch and negative self-talk or and then there's all these other people I don't know there's just if you if you're consuming that for hours mm. every single day that has an impact on how you think how you feel and and how yeah how you think how you feel and, and how you act I think as well so I wonder if people realize that you can actually on so because it's funny isn't it right so Instagram for example mm. it's quite easy to just leave the room unfollow somebody ta yeah. you know there's you, it's not like the person gets a notification mm. Mm. Jamie has decided he hates you <laughs> and, and has left. yeah but on Facebook right mm -hmm. it's a bit more delicate sometimes you know particularly I think I know what you're say. you know if you lose if you if you unfollow like friends or family yeah, or yeah. colleagues yeah. and then all of us why have you unfollowed me yeah, yeah and i don't know if people realize that you can actually snooze people for 30 days yep. on facebook so i did this a couple of years ago now and you can just completely you snooze them but you can completely snooze like you completely shut them off as well can't yeah you? but it's for 30 days right, right? so okay. there's this one particular person who shall remain nameless who <laughs> just gets right on my tits but we yeah. have to be unfortunately we've got to be mates on facebook yeah. so i was feeling a bit hormonal i had mm. pmt i was mm. being a bitch and i was mm. like fuck off and i just yeah. hit the snooze like unfollow mm. for 30 days so my cycle's 32 days long. So when I notice them <laughs> pop up on my feed, I know I'm doing my period yeah. and I hit snooze again. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done that for ages. Yeah. But it just meant that I found myself getting triggered by what they were posting, yep. which was nothing to do with them. It's my shit mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I needed to deal with. Yep. And what was best for me was to not mm. unfollow them, but to snooze them. Yeah. But you can you can do a setting on Facebook where you just don't see posts. Yeah, appear. So I, I think you can you can do this on Facebook and Instagram. Where on Facebook, I'm not sure, but you can. It's basically like you mute mute someone, yeah. or at least that's what's called on Instagram. You yeah. basically mute them, so you just don't see anything. You don't see the stories. You don't see the posts. But you haven't unfriended them, so you can still look at their profile. They can still look at yours, but you've got to actively go out and search for it. And um, it's the same on Instagram. There's a there's a button called mute. Um, I didn't know this. Right, and you can mute someone and you'll stop seeing the stories and you'll stop seeing the feed posts. I think you can actually select whether it's you just want to do one or the other. So you can mm -hmm. either just stop seeing the stories, but you might see the feed posts or or vice versa. Um, and that's good because, you know, there are the social dynamics of friends, family, co-workers that if you followed someone, you know, like, is it a bit weird if you're now unfollowing them to start causing uncomfortable mm. conversation or, or whatever else? So yeah, those features do exist in the apps and use them. Like if there's... If there's people that just, you know, you're looking at and it's triggering or it makes you whatever else it isn't making you feel great. Because I, I look at social media sometimes and how I used it 10 years ago, I was comparing myself to guys all the time. Mm. I was maybe consuming content and going down rabbit holes and stuff that wasn't serving me. Um, versus now my feed, you know, I think you've logged in the Body Smart one. It's all about like finances and motivation yeah. houses and yeah you know just <laughs> and, and just like so stuff so i feel like every time i spend the time that i do on social media i feel like i'm becoming more educated or like i'm seeing like kevin hart tell a story i'm like mm. laughing my head off and i'm like that's what i, I want to go on my phone and i want to see someone tell me a funny joke and laugh yeah <laughs> and i'm like well that was a, a funnier great experience so i've just learned something i didn't know that i might use that with a client uh, versus going on and being like triggered triggered comparing my body you know it's it's those you, you can and the great thing about this about all of that is that you're in control you, yeah. you are in the driving seat but it is taking that time and realizing like hey you know i'm sp spending x amount of time here like actually making me feel worse or better you know mm -hmm. am i getting value and entertainment or am i uh feeling worse off you know comparing my body like staring at myself in the mirror and squeezing my fat and doing whatever else you mm. know what i mean and, and a lot of us do that yeah you know? and it's a uh, it yeah you're in control you, know, you definitely are in control of that you can also curate your feed so in addition to snoozing people or mm. muting which i didn't know you yeah. could do which is amazing <laughs> you can 
So I, I'm like you, I have my notifications turned off, mm -hmm. but you can still, I found if I set the alerts on Instagram, so I want to see posts mm -hmm. from certain people, when I do then go onto my phone, they tend to appear first because it's like Instagram knows, oh, you like this person. Yep. So there's a British female comedian, Daisy May Cooper, who is the most <laughs> deadpan, hilarious yeah. woman I've ever come across in my life. I've mm -hmm. got all of her stuff on notifications. She does <laughs> her stories, and you're right, yeah, it yeah. makes me laugh yeah. but then also on my Facebook feed you can highlight people so they come up with a little star by the name mm -hmm. and you can do it with pages and you can do it with groups and you can do it with right. people so I curate my news feed to be positive stuff I used to we live in Liverpool in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, our local newspaper is called the Liverpool Echo yeah. and it's it's very tabloidy in its mm -hmm. approach. And while it's a brilliant resource for keeping people informed, yeah. it can also be quite depressing because yeah. it highlights a lot of the crime and stuff that's going on where we live. And I had them on a highlight because I wanted right. to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I just realised that every morning I was seeing stuff about my city that I actually didn't, I didn't yeah. want to see. Yeah. So turning them off and then I replaced it with like a quote, you yeah. know, and it's, yeah. it's I, love, I love a wanky quote mm. and they're inspirational. Um, it's, it's just nice being able to control what you see yeah. to, to avoid that that's, comparison. That's, that's the empowering thing is that you are in control there. You know, you, you can take the time, you know, put it aside and, be, and just really audit who you follow. Either go on an unfollowing spree or a mutant spree. And uh, it doesn't have to be forever. Like the great thing about the mute or the snooze for 30 days is, you know, let's find 20 people who you feel like maybe are making you not feel great about yourself. Mm. Do it for 30 days. You know, journal, make a note of how you feel right now and then how you feel afterwards. And if there's a significant difference, that's that's telling you something. Um, and then you can keep curating your feed um, and your social media following to, to people that you, you know, want to follow. I think for those of us who have children, anybody listening who does, Teaching that to our kids is is important as well. I interviewed a lady recently who's a teacher in um, age 16 to 18 mm -hmm. um, and younger. And she was saying that a lot of young people now, when they post a photo, if they don't get a certain amount of expected likes, they within a it. they delete it. Yeah. I was, that blew my brain. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that is... Unfortunately, what's happening, it's, it's, I just, becoming, because again, go that goes back to that comparison. So, why are they doing that? Right. Well, they're comparing their peers who are getting X amount of likes, you know, and I, I just find that crazy that somebody will, and a, a lot of them are young women, mm -hmm. and they'll spend ages doing the makeup and their hair and looking mm -hmm. pretty, and they'll take a nice selfie and they post it. But then, what they do in the meantime is wait for those likes to come in, and it's that dopamine hit yep. of likes. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at their peers, their friends, other people. How many likes did they get? What time did they post yeah. it? And if it doesn't compare, mm -hmm. it goes like. <gasps> yeah, I mean, it is known. I think like young boys are more can be angry, violent, more physical. Mm. As uh, young women, it tends to be more on like reputation and uh, reputation like destruction. I'm not sure if these are the exact words, but yeah, you know, it can be like, oh, did you see? Sally's photo, she only got yeah. three likes, you know, and that yeah. can get shared around DMs and that can cause issues and cause problems in school. So, yeah, I think it's definitely challenging being a, uh, a a child in school nowadays, especially with social media and TikTok and Instagram and everything else that's going on. Um, but, yeah, you know, comparison is, is definitely rife. I used to do this, this talk in schools about social media, but actually applies to absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about what we choose to portray, and I, I used to, I had this diagram and I had these Lucy and Laura, they were called, yeah. right? I was like, right, so Lucy looks at Laura's social media. Mm -hmm. Laura's got a new dress. Laura's been out with her friends. Laura's been on an amazing holiday and mm -hmm. taken an awesome selfie. And, and her perception of Laura is she puts her on this pedestal. Oh my God, her life is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then Laura looks at Lucy's profile and sees that, oh, she went bowling. Oh, she's got a puppy. Oh, she's done yeah. this. And, you know, she sees this amazing life mm -hmm. because what you don't see on social media is, oh, so, you know, Laura's grieving. She lost a grandparent. You know, somebody else has, has had a really crap day. Yeah. Somebody's in debt. Mm -hmm. We don't, we only put the highlights on. Yeah. We put the stuff that we want people True. to be inspired by or yeah. be be jealous of you yeah. know <laughs> that is a reality a lot yeah. of, a lot of the time we will post things for external validation 
Very true. Yeah, it's it's very tough. You don't know what's going behind uh, going on behind closed doors with with a lot of people, and I think that's definitely something I've learned as I, I get older to just take anyone with with however they're acting and in whatever way to just you know take it take it on face service and just you know you've met someone maybe in a reactive state do you know what's going on that day mm. is something else happened is, is whatever else and it can be hard you know mm -hmm. I'm very much talking about acting as your, your higher self <laughs> yeah. um and and yeah you know c comparing yourself I've, I've met so many of these quote-unquote influencers in person and i've just been shocked every time they were just what i perceived them to be online and then what i've uh, how they've actually been in person has been often very very different really yeah um you don't need to name anybody no i'm not gonna expect you no to name i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name anyone i wouldn't have to do that but just uh just the way they act and behave and i'm i'm possibly just i don't know maybe just how you perceive people online sometimes as you might see them as this like super confident individual mm. um that's living this amazing great life and then you get to see them a little bit more in person you're like oh you know not that there's a problem with any of this, mm -hmm. but just a little bit more insecure than I thought you would be, or you're just acting a little bit different than maybe I've I've seen online. And it's just very different. But yeah, you know, social media is a is a weird place in that sense in terms of where you are often only seeing people's highlight reel and they're showing you, you know, even when people follow us, they see a one percent of my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, yeah. and and then and it's it's you know what people people's judgment is on that. I don't know. I don't know what people think of me. I you know Hopefully, they think I'm a, a decent, good person. Which, which another wanky quote alert. What other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah, because really, you don't know. You don't, you don't know, know what other people yeah. think of you, and you can get so consumed with feeling like, you know, oh, what is if I post yeah. this? What's somebody going to say about that? And yeah, it yeah. can be it can be quite destructive. Getting mm -hmm. anxious about oh, how yeah. am I being judged? Yeah, the best thing to do is just not give a shit and just be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> of course no it is and it, you know as long as as long as you feel like your intentions are good mm -hmm. and, and and you know you're a good person deep down you've really got to shut it out sometimes and that can be difficult online i mean us me being slightly more like the comments i get sometimes the negative comments and the, the horrible things that people have said about me online and in dms and stuff like that you know i just i just laugh it off now they're just projecting mm -hmm. at me and i just think if you've if you've got to go online and say something that hateful towards someone else then there's probably other shit going on in your life and i'm just gonna shrug it off and say well you have a you have a fantastic day yeah. <laughs> um but and that's is... why people shouldn't ever be scared of hitting that mute button or unfollowing no because you just don't know what's going on yeah you know, in, in other people's lives. And if it's going to make you feel better mm -hmm. curating your, what you see on your phone or your yeah. computer every day, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Those other people aren't going to know. Yeah. So do it for you. Yeah. No, do it for, for sure. you. And but I, do you think there's a um, healthy comparison? I am. Um, Positive Well, I know comparison. you were saying before about the timeline and I said about school and then body and then probably when I got into mid twenties, there was business, and there was a mm. lot of business comparison as well, and and maybe there still is to to some degree. Um, I think the comparison there is maybe sometimes felt like healthy competition, yeah, uh, which has been good for for you know if they can do it, I I can do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Or uh, if that's what's working for them, you know, we can make this work. So I've used used that at some points, but then there's also been the the negative of like just like in people's lives you don't know what goes on in people's businesses mm -hmm. and whether they're just showing the the cream of the crop at the top as well so um in terms of healthy comparison that's a tough one have you got, got yeah i've got some examples because i think healthy comparison positive comparison can be motivating mm -hmm. can be inspirational a quick one this morning i went to do my um bent over one arm dumbbell row yeah. on my bench and I went to go and find the 12 kilos because mm -hmm. that's what I normally get. And some guy was using them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, let me see if I can lift heavier than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Man in the yeah. corner there using my 12 kilos. Yeah. So I went and got the 14s and I could do it. Yeah. And it was really, it was really empowering to kind mm -hmm. of go, all right, okay. So my little competitive bitchness this morning. Yeah. You know, I, I could have chosen to to go down to the tens, which is mm. what I ordinarily would have mm -hmm. done. But because he was kind of doing a similar exercise, I wanted to see yeah. what I could do. Yeah. I don't know if I'd have done that if that had been a woman. 
Mm -hmm. I don't, but because it was a bloke yeah. and I don't know, I was feeling, <laughs> I was feeling strong yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I went and did it. So that in a way is positive comparison. I'm watching mm. him, I'm looking at him and I'm going, yeah, your technique's off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me with my good Look form and me, my heavier weight. in my good form because I've, I've done my learning zone with Body Smart Fitness. <laughs> Shana has shown me how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that was, that was quite healthy and positive yeah. comparison. Another one, my sister and brother-in-law, chose to buy property and renovate it mm -hmm. and that was something that i'd always thought would be stressful which it is mm -hmm. yes. money pit time consuming <laughs> but it it inspired us to do the same they yeah. kind of you know there is a bit of siblings are always going to be a, a mm -hmm. bit competitive you know what she's got i want mm -hmm. but it, it definitely did inspire us yeah. to kind of go oh well they've done this and mm -hmm. now we've been able to build our forever home and mm -hmm. i don't think we would have ever have done that without that slight comparison yeah. to oh look what they've got what mm -hmm. could we have mm -hmm. and like you were saying there about about business i think that is positive sometimes you know you can it can see be it can be and i think this is and we spoke about this on the, the last episode where just really self-awareness just comes into it mm. because there's always going to be the next thing the more money bigger business yeah. a bigger house a nicer car um and you see those quotes sometimes like oh i don't you know care but like i don't care if i'm crying in my ferrari and that type of stuff you know and you know, it's like, no, I'd rather be happy in me Toyota or whatever else. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. I think it's it's always just making sure that you just be in alignment with like what your intrinsic values are because you definitely don't want to take steps where you can put yourself in a in a position, maybe through trying to keep up mm. with other people, that, that doesn't actually make you happy and you end up putting yourself in a position where maybe you've overcommitted with finances or bills or whatever else to feel like you're keeping up mm -hmm. and now you've got less time, you've got less money, you've got less energy and you're actually not happier off the back of it. And I think that can happen sometimes through through comparison. Uh, I think there's a healthy balance maybe sometimes where keeping up a little bit can be a good thing. Yeah. Um, but again, I think that just comes very much down to knowing yourself and knowing uh, is, is, is this going to make me happier, you know, taking these steps and moving forward and we can get like that can't we because we can see materialistically what other people have and mm. think that we want it too i'm not somebody that's ever been into designer labels i know you were talking about it as a youngster yeah I, i've i've but it i can see how you know you as a woman oh mm. my mate's got the latest designer chanel I mean, handbag i've got, I've got to have it i on. know you have <laughs> Your six pound Casio watch. And it's only because this is my 14th one because I've misplaced them that many times or just left them in the gym. So that's a good reason. You know, I don't think I could afford that if it was a Rolex losing it 14 times. I was, right. So you don't have like a nice posh <laughs> I have, dress watch. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. But that is only for special that's occasions. That's only when I'm going out. Yeah. Because you've got, you're on yeah, your 14th so. six quid Casio. <laughs> Did you buy that off Amazon? Uh, I do. Yeah. It's just repeat order now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 buy again yeah but i bet there would be i've seen this before with with guys in particular mm. you know that the watch chat it seems to be a thing with men it does it's like a status yeah. symbol isn't it look what watch i've got and and everyone's got their thing which is which yeah. is fine you know some people are into watches some people like I, I really like me cars and some people are you know into other things and that's fine if we all like the same thing yeah but it's i guess it's you know, can you have a nice car and still be into cars without putting yourself in a precarious situation where you've overexposed yeah. yourself financially? You know, can you do that for watch? Can you do that for other things? The answer most of the time is yes, but it's whether you feel comfortable and confident enough in your own decisions that you're not maybe doing that to feel like you're keeping up mm -hmm. because maybe you're a little bit insecure about not keeping up. Um, so I think there's a bit of that and I think that's hard conversations to have with yourself. But again, it really does boil back, back down to being as self-aware as you can. I once got told that um, when I was back when I was freelancing, if I invested in a good watch and a decent car, um, mm. it would raise uh, the perception levels of me and people would be more likely to work with me, <laughs> to which I said, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did believe that when I first started personal training and I bought my car, current car that I have now on possibly on that bias to a degree because yeah. i thought like oh if people see me driving a nice bmw they'll perceive me as a more successful trainer mm -hmm. and i'll be more likely to get more clients and more business whether that was true or not whether that was what happened 
you know, if it were to be me now, I wouldn't give a shit about turning <laughs> up in like a 200 pound Skoda going, bah, 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 you know what I mean? I just wouldn't care because I just, because, yeah. but is that, you know, and then I just look, is that come from growing up a little bit, being mm. a bit more mature, a bit more confident? You know, I don't need that external validation off, off maybe some of these materialistic mm-hmm. things, but it is true. You know, things that cost a lot of money, there is a level of perceived success behind them and that's fine. But I know a lot of people who have bought like, cars they shouldn't have and put and put, put on a lease or whatever for mm. two three years and it's like you know you get it you get the excitement to get in the car you drive around you feel great in it you know but really what are you trying to do there you're just trying to let other people who you drive past who don't even know you it's like <laughs> oh look you've got a nice car and now you're you know 500 pounds 600 pounds a month down the tank uh to is that do- how much they cost Oh, I've got a crap car. Some, <laughs> some of them can cost up to like a thousand pound a month, and then you got your nine, ten thousand pound down. So, you know, it's wow. it's a lot of money, and then you've got a contract for two, three years, and it's just like, mm, is the quality of your life going down now for this? And you can start resenting, you know, the things that you bought or mm. uh, have bought into. So, I think I think they're always just really important conversations to have uh, before you before you go down that, that yep. rabbit hole. Yeah, a really important conversation I want to have mm. is about comparison when it comes to your own results and weight loss because this is this is a very very huge good one. yeah a huge thing isn't it you know it's really easy again on social media to see those before and after pictures and think i want to lose that much that quick like yeah. that person yeah. why should we not do that so this is this is a really really good one fast is relative like how fast you get results and how fast you progress is relative to you And Mm -hmm. people don't look at it like that. People go, oh, she's losing two pounds a week and he's losing four pounds a week and they're losing two pounds a week instead of going, well, what is realistic for me to lose? Because you're a unique person. You've got a unique life. Maybe you've got kids, maybe you haven't. Maybe you work 60 hours a week. Maybe you don't work at all. You've got a unique life. Maybe you've been dieting for 30 years. Maybe you've never dieted in your life. Maybe you've got a healthy relationship with food. Maybe you haven't. Like there's a million and one questions to Mm -hmm. be asked. And how fast you can move towards getting the results you want, whether it's weight loss or whatever else, is going to be relative to you and a bunch of other factors. So if you're losing half a pound a week and you're feeling great and you're staying consistent and you're you're progressing and it's every single week and you're feeling good about it, fantastic, keep doing that. And if maybe there's room to do a little bit more, maybe get a little bit more active or eat maybe fewer calories and see a little bit faster results, maybe you can test the water with that. And if it feels like it's getting too hard and too much of a struggle, go back and just be okay with the half a pound a week. But then don't look at the lady that's losing two and a half pounds a week when she might be five inches taller than you because height matters in terms of how many calories you burn. She might be working out twice as much as you, might have no kids and be doing six sessions a week. (laughs) She might be a nurse and do 25,000 steps a day Mm. and you do 3,000 because you're sat in an office. You know what I mean? So they already have things that, allow them to maybe burn more calories and be in a large deficit and see faster weight loss results. But how fast you move is relative to you. And that is that is really where comparison can be just a kick. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say kick in the dick. <laughs> it just it just is because it's just like you you could be doing you could be doing great. You could be getting fantastic results and moving as fast as you can. I mean you look at another person who's maybe losing twice as much weight as you, mm-hmm. four times as much weight as you. And you'd be like, why aren't I losing weight like in that sort of pace? And it's like, well, you know, look, whoever you are, it's because they're doing twice as many workouts and you can't. They're doing three times as many steps and you realistically can't right now. Mm-hmm. So you got to take that on board and be like, I'm actually moving as fast as I can. I'm going to flex that patience muscle and I'll get to my goal when I get to my goal. And it's the same as well, isn't it, with training? It's really easy to, again, going back to watching ladies on mm. online on instagram who are fitness professionals mm. and thinking oh well i should be able to lift as much as that or i should be able mm. to to run as fast as mm. as this person and it's just it doesn't work like that we're all individuals with different strengths weaknesses for sure yeah genetics and yeah no they and they, they all play you know they all play a role you know there's there's just so many different things that come into that and i think that's why that's where comparison can become really toxic because you can, we've had, I've had ladies who are crushing it by by my standards. And I have high standards when it comes to coaching <laughs> clients because uh, it's very important to hold people to that level of accountability. But I've had ladies who are crushing it and then have come to me and sent me other people's progress photos, 
in in our in who are being coached by us and then why aren't i seeing this or how's that happening how's it getting faster and then whenever i've you know I'll, I'll pull it up i'll pull up a calorie calculator i'll pull up what they're doing the calories on this and then i'll pull up the other ladies and i'll show them you know the difference in terms of maybe mm -hmm. energy output um and the fact that they've been consistent and maybe this person hasn't um and just show them like look right if you want to lose you know weight at the rate that they are we've either got to do an extra three workouts a week and move do an extra 5,000 steps a day, which you don't have time for because you work 50 hours a week. You've got yeah. three kids, you've got after school club, you're busy over <laughs> weekends, you know, you've got all these other things. So you guys, like, you physically don't have time for that, but like, let's just play it out. Yeah. Um. You know, and so we go through all this and when they, you know, I send it and I explain it back to them and they go, oh no, that does make sense. And it does, it does help, but it's, it, that isn't often how we're, reviewing things we're not looking at it from an analytic scientific sort of standpoint we're looking at it from oh they're just losing weight faster than me <laughs> yeah and also yeah. I, i've been there before you know I've, I've done some crazy things to lose weight very fast mm -hmm. but it doesn't last because it's got an yeah. end date on it and mm -hmm. you know i've done that before where we've i've been in challenges and there's a winner mm -hmm. at the end of it because again you're comparing yourself yeah. to other people and it's probably one of the most damaging things I've ever done. You said this to me yourself the other week, like stop putting an end date on things. It's yeah. about enjoying you enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. It's about taking each day as it mm -hmm. comes, getting that one percent better yeah. every day. And patience, like yeah. being patient is so yeah. important. Yeah. And I do want to stress, like, you know, fat loss, uh, like if anyone has fat loss goals, there is an end date to it, but you probably don't know when that's gonna be in terms of putting a time on it. Mm. Because a fat loss phase isn't forever, just like saving for a mortgage and saving for a deposit isn't forever. Um, but if you're taking like radical restrictive steps to get there and get those results, um, you know, in a eight week span or a 12 week span, you know, often the steps that you're going to take are going to be so unsustainable. Like the second you get there, it's just being so hard, so painful. You will just instantly revert back to what yeah. you were doing before and then some, and you will quickly see. Uh, the reverse happen in terms of the weight coming back on, your fitness levels going down the tank, you're feeling awful about the back of it. So um, a fat loss phase, definitely not forever, uh, but you definitely want to make sure that the steps that you're taking and the habits and the actions and the nutrition that you're following um, is definitely got a level of sustainability to it. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So to sum up and to wrap up, um, comparisonitis, I actually found this description of it. What I want to, well, it's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? Um, yeah. This is from a lady called Melissa Ambrosini, who has written a book called Comparisonitis. Mm -hmm. So this, this lady was a dancer. She was a model. So her body was judged yeah. and compared to others. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine doing that, being a, a model and, Tough. you know, getting yeah. rejected for jobs because your body doesn't look better than the next mm -hmm. person? Yeah. So she... She also struggled getting pregnant and found herself comparing mm -hmm. herself to other people who were falling pregnant when she yep. wanted to. And she just found it really, really tough. So she actually came up with this description. Comparisonitis is a contagious, socially transmitted condition that occurs when you compare yourself to others so frequently and so fiercely that you're left paralyzed with your confidence in tatters and your self-worth plummeting. It may sound trivial, but this affliction can have serious adverse effects on our mental health, leading to depression, anxiety, overthinking and regret. And to make matters worse, our comparison culture is only expanding. Thanks to social media, we have more opportunities to compare ourselves than ever before. And even kids are falling into this trap. Yep. Stay in your own lane. <laughs> Work out what triggers you. Yep. Curate your social media. What, what's the button called on Instagram? Mute. Mute. We need that. Yeah. And just realize that you are, as as this lady says, you know, it's a, was it 400 trillion to one chance that we are even here? That's the, that's the odds of being a human being, 400 trillion, 400 trillion, to trillion so if you're, to you know, one. If your dad had just decided like, nah, tonight's not for me, <laughs> you wouldn't be here. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. You know, or, you know, or just anything. It's just, it's the chances of you being a human being is, is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, do not waste it comparing, you know, you know, we're here for such a small amount of time, you know, definitely don't waste it comparing yourself to other people. And if social media is a big part that that lady's brought up in comparison, comparing, comparisonitis, compar it's like, you know, it's I'm like not even going to try to say that. I'm not even going to try like to say that. Like tonsillitis, but comparisonitis. Okay, yeah. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just as lovely. It does, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> but yeah, all that you're following, 100%, yeah. 
And if you want to follow us, we are. If you want to follow us, we are at Body Smart Fitness. We've got lots of positive, motivational content going out on a regular basis. Yeah, to help you get clear with your mindset, nutrition, and fitness. And if you are interested in one to one tailored coaching, very, very personalized, very customized, the link is in the show notes or the bio of how you can apply.